many times uh, when devotees uh, take up devotional service, you displease a lot of people. Like, for example, when young, uh, my parents, for example, <laughs> you've given up all of this, you know. Uh, you know, I, would, uh, I was set up to, uh, you know, went, got, went to an Ivy League college and then, then uh, was in, in graduate uh, studies and, and so on like that. And, uh, and, and then I became a devotee. And uh, I, I, w I, was, I was still in, in graduate religious studies. And one day I show up on campus and I got to meet the devotees. And, and uh, you know, and I, I was used to being respected by people, you know, I was you know, fairly well educated and well brought up. And, and uh, but then in those days in Krishna consciousness movement, the early days, we, uh, uh, nobody wore uh, karmi clothes. Hmm? That is the normal wear of people that, that, that non-devotees wear. As if you became a devotee, you were not considered bona fide at all if you didn't wear uh, a dhoti or a sari. That was the only stuff. Uh, uh, that you could you could wear, and we didn't have good d d stuff from India yet in those days, and so you'd go down to the uh, cloth store and uh, buy uh, e e either white or or pink <laughs> cloth, uh, yellow actually. Even nobody had, we, 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 mostly the householders wore yellow. And you slice it off every, you know, five yards or eight yards, depending whether it's dhoti or sari, and that's what you wore. And then some kind of t-shirt or something like that, if it was if it was cold or things like that. That's what you wore. Uh, and uh, and then, uh, you know, if you're used to walking into a store and being treated nicely, people will all of a sudden be rude to you all the time. I mean, you were really uh, an outsider. In America, if, if, if you were like that. But uh, I wanted to be considered as a devotee by the devotees. Uh, and I was still had uh, uh, some, some stuff to do in graduate school. Uh, in fact, I was teaching, actually. I was uh, teaching uh, uh, Introduction to Religious Studies, and I show up in a dhoti. And, and uh, there was consternation all over the religion department <laughs> because the, the, this was, this was the, one of the first academic study of religions. It was a religion department that was the academic study of religion. Uh, it got, it was controversial because other people say, you know, anthropology says we teach anthropology of religion uh, uh, other people say we teach sociology of religion we teach philosophy of religion you guys are just preachers in disguise no 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 this is the academic study of religion we're not preachers in disguise and then I show up in a dhoti while well, I'm a teacher <laughs> I have also kind of kind of uh, kind of curse that way you know and uh, and and the other thing I did was uh, I had the, the students chant. And I had them chant the Isha Upanishad. And so, you know, this came up and I was called into the, the, the people who ran the religion department at Temple University in Philadelphia. Uh, and, uh, and I showed them the standard Mayavadi translation of the Isha Upanishad. You know, Om Purnam Da Purnam Idan Purnat Purnam Udachate. Uh, Prabhupada translated the Supreme Personality of Godhead as perfect and complete. But I would, I showed them the translation Om, this is full, that is full. 
when the fullness is taken from fullness, fullness remains. When the fullness is added to fullness, <laughs> <you know? laughs> well, there's not nothing wrong with this. <laughs> no mention of God in there. So, you know, it's called Isha Upanishad. You know. Anyway, that's just uh, that. That's uh, uh, an idea of uh, of uh, what you go through sometimes if you become a devotee. Uh, uh, you're you're ostracized. You're you uh, uh, have to have to have to deal with these things. I was used to going into stores and have everybody be be you know uh, a white male in America. Everybody's polite to you, and uh, you know you seem fairly educated. You're not a shoplifter. You have some money to spend. But as soon as you come in a dhoti people don't even look at you. They, when they talk to you, they look a little to the right or a little to the left. Not just a doty, but a shaved head, T-lock, or the whole, whole, the whole thing. That's, that's what, uh, that's what we, we went to. So, uh, but somehow or other, we, sur this was, uh, we survived. So anyway, it says here, anyone cared for by Lord Vishnu, does not need to care about anyone else. In other words, you're under the protection of the Lord. And, 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 and Bali Maharaj knows this. And, and the bereft of all opulence is, is not, a, not a curse, but a benediction. Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, the Lord is one who takes away, you know. <laughs> One of his names, uh, and he takes it all this thing. So, uh, and Prabhupada says the other thing is, is that uh, the opulences offered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead are not to be compared to the opulences obtained by karma kanda. Yeah, we, you know, the, the, other, the other obstacle, for example, that I faced when I became a devotee was, of course, my parents. Uh, and uh, I re remember uh, sitting uh, at the dining table uh, when I announced to them uh, that, that I was becoming a devotee and uh, looked like I was going to drop out of, you know, not finish my, my scholarly work. And, and I remember my father reached on the table and there was a stack of uh, sliced bread on the table. He picked up the bread and held it like this and said, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about this? You know? And I thought, well, I couldn't explain to him. Well, you know, we have chapatis. It's really better than this, like, bond. You know, this American white tasteless bread. You know? But that's what people thought, you know, uh, you know. And of course, you're a vegetarian and your mother thinks you're going to die. Years later, she says, oh, your diet is so healthy, you know. But <laughs> we're, we're, that's what happens when you're ahead of everybody else. <laughs> but, but, but so, especially the early devotees in the movement, they under, underwent a lot of uh, difficulty just, just by uh, 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 doing these things. So, uh, uh, and uh, we, we uh, anyway, Prabhupada's point here is, is uh, he, may, he may take away, uh, uh, takes away all, all, all inauspicious things, but, uh, but he also gives things. So the, the opulences are there if it comes. And he's so... Uh, if a devotee becomes very opulent, I, I mean, you know, Prabhupada, look, he came to America in the same way, uh, all by himself, no institutional support, uh, uh, didn't know what was going to happen, was looking to see when the ships were going back to India in case he didn't make it, you know. Uh, he didn't have, he didn't have anything. But then, you know, uh, he got opulences he had temples all over the world big temples and then we had rooms special room for Srila Prabhupada when he came and 
he was greeted in the airports like nobody else <laughs> when celebrities came like that. Uh, uh, so he did become opulent. He had, you know, we saw what was in his bank account when he left and what, what was done with that money in his will and so on. But the real opulences of a devotee uh, are, are, he says, will never be vanquished. Uh, that, that whatever you, whatever spiritual progress you make, that's the real opulence, of course. Even if you don't complete it, uh, if you made 20% progress in this life only, in Krishna consciousness, next life, you will take birth as a human being and start where you left off and keep on going. And uh, you will find that uh, as you surrender to Krishna, that you're being taken care of by Krishna. And the, the really thing about being taken care of by Krishna uh, 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 is, is not so much that you have things that Krishna gives you, but you your devotion to Krishna. Oh, Krishna is taking care of me. He cares for me. He shows it. And, and your gratitude toward Krishna increases. Uh, because I don't have any money. I don't have any savings. I don't, none of those things. But somehow or other, I've got a roof over my head. I've got facility. I've got, yeah, and Donald Trump is giving me a check. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he 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 takes he takes care of the devotees. The the bread is on the table. The chapatis are there. Uh, every everything is there. Uh, and if uh, yeah, anyway, that this is this is this is what 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 he does. And and I said the the real point of being taken care of by Krishna is not that you get stuff from Krishna. But that you immediately, oh, now what can I do for Krishna? He's, he's giving me this. What can I do for him? Because you want to serve Krishna more. And, and so the relationship with Krishna simply deepens. And that's the real benediction. The real benediction uh, is that care for Krishna and that sense that uh, you'll never be vanquished. Uh, under any conditions. Uh, so, uh, uh, and when fruit of activities, uh, that's what happens. You, you, if you have you have good good faith, the fruit of activities, that means you know as you've done something that gave you good karma. When you enjoy that karma, uh, it's running out. It's a limited amount, and when you when you uh, 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 reach the end of it, boom, you go down. So that you see that all the time, like big people who are famous or something like that end up in jail. So many politicians, for example, their good karma <laughs> runs out, and they end up uh, uh, in prison. Uh, uh, so they get so good you're, you're, because you're withdrawing on your account of karma if you're on the karma uh, thing. Uh, and if you're a devotee and something bad happens, you have to look what no, somehow or other, this is Krishna's mercy. Uh, and Prabhupada once said, when he underwent difficulty, he, he, he told us that he... Uh, uh, when he finally, he disentangled himself from his material life, he gave up a position, a good business position. He made, therefore, enemies of his family, certainly his wife, uh, and almost all of his children. Uh, his sister was happy with him, but <laughs> not so many. Uh, for, for We called her Pishima and uh, and, and, and and so he he uh, took the path of devotional service and uh, uh, wasn't his side thing anymore that he was doing along with other stuff. 
he settled some money on his wife. She had enough to live, but nothing like she was looking forward to when he became in charge of Bose's pharmaceutical work. Uh, he went to Vrindavan. And while he was in Vrindavan, he was gored by a cow or a bull uh, and, and hurt. And he somehow crawled back to whatever room he was in and, and stayed for a while and finally recovered. And he uh, said uh, to us that when this happened, uh, he accepted, he said, I accepted that it was Krishna's mercy, but I couldn't understand how it was Krishna's mercy, but I accepted it. Later on, he said, I understood. That's what he said. Oh. And th then people asked me when I told the story, oh, did he say what it was? <laughs> he didn't explain it, but he just said that he understood how it was Krishna's mercy. Uh, so if we take whatever ha ha happens to us, good or bad, as Krishna's mercy, it seems bad. If we accept it that way. We'll find some way even to utilize the energy of the negative to achieve a positive result. I've seen this not just with myself, but other people also, that if they, they have this somehow or other, this is Krishna's mercy, how is it? Pray to Krishna, how is this your mercy? How can I utilize this energy of the negative to do something positive and take some step? And you'll see that Krishna reciprocates. He takes care of us. We are all under Krishna's care. Uh, and so that the, the, the fearlessness uh, of Bali Maharaj is available to all of us. He's the example of uh, of uh, of how a devotee can can uh, uh, be how how a devotee can accept Krishna's things, even if it looks like a reversal, and actually. Uh, become closer to Krishna. And that's that's what's worthwhile. If, if you know, if you can finally see that, you know, all the strings that hold you up are gone except for one, and that one is Krishna, then your feelings for Krishna increase. Uh, and that's worth it. Uh, and uh, and uh, so uh, we, should, we, we should really, I mean, when you say you have to have faith in Krishna, that's part of the faith is not just to believe that he's there, but to understand that he cares for us. He cares for us very much. The measure of his care is, is how, when he came as Lord Chaitanya to distribute Krishna consciousness freely to everybody, didn't care when the Panchatattva sang and danced, they gave it, they distributed freely to everybody. They didn't care who was fit and who was unfit. They just gave it. Uh, and we we have this is Lord Chaitanya especially giving us this mercy, uh, and uh, uh, we should take advantage of it, uh, and we we should consider that as Prabhupada famously said quite a number of times, human life is meant for self-realization, and then there was a corollary and not sense gratification. So the more we can we can engage in self-realization, uh, not only a little hard to get some rid of some of the sense gratification, but gradually, as we get rid of sense gratification, our love for Krishna increases, and so then you know you're looking for it. That that's why that's why very advanced devotees have a real taste for austerity, uh, and, and 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 so on. And not because for its own sake, but because uh, love for Krishna increases. And that should be our, our mission. Uh, and uh, that's what uh, Bali Maharaj is a, a good example of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, this, uh, when he looks like he's going to you know, go, takes and takes the curse as a, a blessing. Okay, I think we'll stop there. And uh, uh, how do we proceed from here for, for questions?
questions and comments and so on? Do I choose people or what? Or what? Do you do it? <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. So I have just unmuted everyone. Whoever has a question or a comment and appreciation, they can feel free to unmute themselves and to share. And also I, ha I see some comments or questions on the chat box. So if you want, I can read from the comment box to you. Okay. Of course, the first one is like uh, by Anand Bihari Prabhu. He is asking, what was in Srila Prabhupada's will? Uh, I can't remember it exactly now. It, it's, uh, it, it, it's around... I, I, th I think he, he mostly uh, uh, made the GBC his, you know, the first line of an Acharya's will is you, his name is a successor. That's like the, the established way of doing thing. So Acharya uh, names the, the one who will take over the institution. And, uh, and what Prabhupada made is the, the GBC as his successor in the first line of his will. And that, that had force in court. You know, later on that got challenged in court. We, we had spent some time <laughs> in court with this. And because it was the first line of Prabhupada's will, uh, the, alter, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the governing body shall, commission shall be the ultimate managing authority for the entire International Society for Krishna Consciousness. I think I can remember it exactly very close to that. That was the first line of his will. And it was respected by the courts. Everybody knew that's what you do. You name your successor. And he did it. And then there were some particular uh, uh, other things. Hmm? Yeah, and he set set up. Uh, well, the the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust was a separate organization. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Uh, anyway, I I don't re I don't remember all this stuff now. We can look it up. <laughs> now the other question is. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prabhu. The other question is by Gaur Kumar Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu's question is like, is the amount of fearlessness directly proportional to the amount of surrender we have? Yes. Yeah. Prabhupada's name, remember, Abhaya, uh, that's fearless. <laughs> he is without fear. And boy, did he really exemplify it, huh? <laughs> There are others like Mother Janvi and uh, Jagdish Vandamai Prabhu, they're just thanking you for, for the wonderful class. And the comment is about like how it was sobering to remember that we should be prepared to accept honor and dishonor and min misunderstanding on the path of bhakti without being discouraged. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for uh, adding those Prabh points. Prabhupada said once, uh, he said, somebody said they were discouraged and Prabhupada said, discouragement is not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> So if others don't have a question, I have something to ask. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Like just on, I've been like thinking about this because I had a personal experience with some other devotees. So now you just said that Srila Prabhupada said discouragement is not allowed. Uh, but the current generation thinks like it's my right to feel the way I feel. Like there may be a right way to feel, but I also have the right to feel the, the way I'm currently feeling. So... Well, I, I, I mean, that to me, it means you should be honest. I, I, I mean, for example, I may feel lust. Okay, I, that, that's my feeling. But I also don't have to like it. Mm. Don't have to encourage it. Uh, 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 and actually honest about your, what, what you feel. Sometimes if you're, as they say in psychology, in denial, that there's something about yourself that's unacceptable and you pretend it's not there, then it takes you over. So the, the main thing is to be, is to be clear, actually. I mean, really, the, as far as I can see, uh, you know, we are as a spiritual path and it's the opposite of the material path. 
And it's the path of humility. You can see everywhere that great devotees become humble and they seek out humility. It's not that they like it for its own sake. You know, Nietzsche said about religious people, they have a slave mentality. You know, you should be big, you should be great, you should be powerful. Uh, but devotees on the path of humility. And the reason for the humility is not for its own sake, but when humility comes, love for Krishna increases. Uh, and then when Krishna is taking care of you and helping you in your service, you become very powerful. But you don't say, I am very powerful. You say, Krishna is very powerful. Because <laughs> you can see that Krishna is doing. I'm not the doer. But Krishna is picking me up and using me, taking control of my senses, showing me what to do. Uh, 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 and uh, I just, you know, gratitude. Uh, take, takes over uh, and you want to in increase your service uh, uh, to Krishna in any way that you can for because of that gratitude toward Krishna. That's the path of a devotee. Uh, uh, and that, that's how... So yeah, you should, we should be honest. Look, the other thing that's really important, you know, we always say you're not your body. That's, you know, you're also not your mind, which is really good news. <laughs> because, because when we came into this body, we brought our subtle body, our mind with us from a previous life. We don't know what garbage is in there. You're not always fully conscious of what's in your mind. And so then, you know, we have these nice prayers, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, oh my mind, you're not a Vaishnava. Yeah, I'm a Vaishnava. My mind is not. No, that was former lives. I was doing so many things. And then, you know, you, you ask Krishna, you know, here, here's how I'm going to treat my mind. I'm going to expose it to the rays of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And those, the potencies of the Maha Mantra become activated when I chant with attention. Uh, and so when we chant, we have to fix our mind upon Krishna, who's so accessible. You know, Hare Krishna Rama, Krishna is there. Krishna and Krishna's energies are all there in those words. So you're associating with Krishna. I once had a professor said, the question is not whether God exists, is God available? And I thought, well, that's true. Because if God exists and is not available, what difference does it make? <laughs> so here Krishna has made himself in the, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra supremely available. Anyone can say it, even a child. But then if we want to make progress, we have to try to chant while trying to give up offenses. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, the offense from which all offenses spring is inattentiveness while chanting. So, you know, you're sitting in, 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 in a room, uh, you're chanting Japa. So there's, the, the stage is simple. There's you, there's the holy name, and there's your mind. And the mind wants to go away because, you, you know, we've had it from so many lifetimes, you don't know what's in there. When the mind goes away, bring it back. That's chanting on the clearing stage because this offense of inattentiveness for, while chanting, if we don't deal with that one, we're not going to deal with the other offenses. A a and when we start to deal with these offenses, the potencies of the holy name become released. It's not Nama Basa, it's the Shuddha Nam, it's the pure name. Uh, uh, abasa, Nama Basa means the, the, the sort of dawning twilight of the holy name. There's nam aparad, the, the committing offenses and not trying to do anything about it. When we're trying to deal with the offenses, nam abasa, the dawning light of the holy name, and then the shuddha nam, the, the pure name, that comes like that. This is the path that has been given to us and it's doable. Uh, and, you know, if you'll have good days and you'll have bad days. 
you know, whether com the, the, the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn is good for you or not depends on different things, but it will change. <laughs> You're not in control of all that stuff. But we just keep trying. And we're showing Krishna that we're interested in a relationship. And Krishna will respond. And so at first it may seem like just a little mechanical. You'll have good days when you really feel something about Krishna. You'll have bad days when you don't seem to have any feelings, but you do it anyway. And this shows Krishna that, 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 that we are serious and he really reciprocates. Somehow or other, he wants a relationship with us. He's got so many great devotees, but he wants a relationship with us. Uh, and... and Okay, if he does, I, I can't argue with him. So, <laughs> but this is this is this is this is his nature. He's very very generous and very magnanimous, and and uh, and Lord Chaitanya has come as Lord Chaitanya to to make it possible for us. Otherwise, we would come close to any of these things. Thank you so much for i really appreciate so many aspects of the answer that you gave like especially that how we are not just not this body but also not uh, this mind so and uh, in that way properly identifying ourselves as servants of krishna and chanting we can overcome these uh, things we may have problems and can be honest but no no need to like them i really mm -hmm. love that point it's and the clock we still have like one more question uh probably daniel would you like to ask the question personally Sure. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for the class. Um, so my conditioned hierarchical, hierarchical way of thinking makes me think Krishna's mercy uh, picks off where the spiritual masters leaves off, but I know this is wrong. So how, how do we see Krishna's mercy in our lives, but also how should we be appreciating the spiritual master and seeing their mercy in our life also? Well, the, the spiritual master is the embodiment of Krishna's mercy. The, the, Krishna's mercy, he sends us devotees to associate with. Uh, and, and so it comes to us in the form of the spiritual master, or maybe we get a book or, you know, somehow or other, that mercy comes to us, or just prasadam, you know, just by... Uh, eating <laughs> you can get krishna's mercy so it comes in many ways but the spiritual master is in fact uh the embodiment of krishna's mercy who comes to us uh we can't see krishna's taste him touch him smell him any of those things right now but the, the spiritual master is there so we can have someone we can relate to and by that relationship uh uh, uh we get his mercy or her mercy, uh, as it may be. And, and I remember you have different kinds of spiritual masters too. There's a Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru. Uh, and you can take mercy from all, uh, uh, one Diksha Guru, but many, many Shiksha Gurus are there. Uh, and and uh, take advantage of it. Uh, it it's, it's there. Uh, and now, you know, you, you, you can sit in, in one place and uh, listen to so many really advanced devotees give classes and, uh, and uh, all those kinds of things. That's also, uh, you can take shiksha from, from, uh, from, from anyone. And uh, uh, in, in this way, uh, you, you, uh, you experience Krishna's mercy. So that that's the that that's usually for most of us the first way. It's not something other than Krishna's mercy. That is Krishna's mercy, the, the spiritual teachers. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you need the mercy of teachers, you, even in, in, in material life. If you have a good teacher in the first grade, you know, you'll get an enthusiasm for learning. You know, just <laughs> who can you do if you're a kid? You know. So, 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 so that, that teaching is very, very important in any case. And then when the teaching actually takes you to, to uh, your ultimate welfare, because the materialistic teachers there may be concerned about your, you know, mental and physical welfare, 
But the spiritual teacher is about your ultimate welfare. And if you take care of that, other things will automatically be, be handled. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for the clarity.